Welcome back. Welcome back to Angling 360. We're talking very quiet for. Because it's a secret. Shh. Springtime. Springtime's eventually here. Uh, and we're well into springtime, so it means one thing in my book. Tench. Tench. The Tench campaign, if you can call it a campaign, is underway. What are we? It's third, third week of April. So it's still quite early in the season. And we've come to a place that we're really not too sure about. Never fished it before. Nobody knows about it apparently. And we're going to try and keep it that way. Hey, but yeah, how do you think our, our chances are? I fucking know it. <laughs> You'll not have heard that. Still got a clue. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's the plan today. I was fishing the helicopter legs and twizzle booms and all yeah, that. Spec it just gives me a headache with that carry on, but that's so what he's here for. So yeah, it's a, it's a specialist style on alarms. Because we're expecting the fishing to be a wee bit slow, but you, just, you never know. But yeah, that's the plan. And as always, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll talk you through the... Talk you through the setup. The heat setups yeah. and uh, <laughs> the bait and that we're using, but it's a beautiful wee place. It's, some drive, it's, it's nice. Some drive up here, isn't it? It, it looks... It looks the part. Right, well, wish us luck. See you in a bit. Tinker Tales spring summer vlog uh, and throughout this vlog we probably will adopt several methods, several techniques and we'll, we'll, we'll try them all. The the one that I've really got in mind for maybe later on in the year, slightly later on in the year when the fishing's a wee bit more active uh, is the, the stick float, or sorry it won't be a stick float but a waggler, a waggler float on the, on the centre pin and amongst the lily pads but when it's a wee bit slower like it definitely is today. We've opted for something a little bit, well, it's, a, it's a lazy method really, but it is really effective when the fishing's maybe a wee bit slower. Uh, and it's fishing specimen style or, or specialist style rods on alarms with bolt rigs. The the rod I'm, I'm, I'm using today is 1.5 pound test curve. It's a dual tip, but I'm fishing it with the solid tip section today. Uh, and uh, a nice big reel. I think that's an Okuma Pro Liner. Uh, and ten pound line, ten pound line right through. Nice strong, strong gear. Uh, been tench fishing once before last. I think it was last year. And we went slightly undergunned. Uh, we got broken off by a couple of fish, which were which was really disappointing. But yeah, nice strong gear, decent rod. Not overly heavy. One point five pound test curve is, is just about right for for tench. And then the boat rig effect that I'm talking about, I think, is really important. <laughs> Excuse me. Really important when fishing on on alarms, and I've opted for the good old helicopter rig. Very 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 short helicopter rig. I don't know if you can pick that up there, but that is it's a four inch. It's a four inch hook link. Fished very very tight to the to the feeder. The feeder that I've went for today is a window feeder, and we're filling that with chopped worm, red maggots, sealed off a little bit of green lip mussel. Ground bait. That's my go-to ground bait for tench. Green ground bait for a green fish. Actually fishing a hair rig today, and it's a hair rig with one of these quick stops. So it's become the uh, hair rigs from Guru, and I'm actually hair rigging chopped worm. So it's almost like a worm kebab, and I find that works really well for tench. So that's the general setup. Nice strong rod, nice strong gear, bolt effect helicopter rig. Here rig chop worm, maggots worm in the feeder. It's all that's missing is something big, fat and green. With the one kicking out somewhere. Tinker tails. Tench, Latin name is Tinka Tinka, hence the title. And our objective in this, the bright and saying it's like a short window we've got for targeting these tench where we are. And our goal is to catch tench, but as always, you want to beat your PB, don't you? So I think my PB is around about three pounds something. That be right? 
And yours is, Alex, about five. So, we've got a couple of venues in mind. And this particular venue that we're at isn't exactly going to plan. We are early in the season. It's still, it's still a bit cold to be fair, hence the, the hood on it. But we've had a couple of line bites. We think we're fishing in the right areas. So we can only hope that we can put a, a tench in the start of this vlog. If not, we'll keep trying as we do. Pretty quiet so far. Not many signs of any fish anywhere. No fizzing, no bubbles, no reeds moving. The closest we've got to sign is a couple of line bites on my left hand rod. I'm thinking it's probably a small roach though, but you never know. It might be it might be a tench. But it's always a good idea on a new venue, a place that you've never come to before, to use your first session, this session for us, even if it's not great in the fishing front to to find your way about, to, to learn a little bit, learn as much as possible about the venue. So seeing it's been so quiet, uh, I've got a float rod out and I've just set it up with a very light waggler and just overshotted it. And I don't have any plum weights, but I've just overshotted it with a couple of BB shot there. And I'm just having a wee cast around, find out where the depth contours are, find out where the shallows, the shallows are the drop-offs, and it's, it's, it's really interesting. It's about three feet deep close in the margins and then out where I'm fishing just now it drops off to about four or five and then the further off to the right it just slopes down six seven and I've not quite got round to the the far the far bank yet but it definitely looks like it's sloping off so fishing at about four to five feet isn't bad no it's pretty good so we're in the right place Gordon's got a couple of rods in the margins which are sitting in about two and a half three feet which might be a wee bit shallow but that's why I'm there isn't it? <laughs> Uh, but but yeah, so we'll have a wee cast around and, and see see what we can find out. So I've cast out just to the left of where I'm fishing and just slowly drawn that that float back. It's sitting just above the surface just now. But the closer I bring it in, that float just sits up a little bit higher every time. Telling me that it's shallowing up ever so slightly as it comes towards it. Float's almost sitting flat now. Yes, yeah, so we're well over depth. Yeah, so out where we're fishing, around about five feet. And then just gently, gradually sloping inwards. So I mentioned earlier about the, the lazy approach that we've taken today just because we thought the fishing was going to be a wee bit slow, a wee bit, uh, and it's your, it's your sort of specialist style rods on, on alarms. Uh, fishing two rods over a, a sort of a lightly baited area. We've not went mental with the bait today, we've just, we've pretty much just put in what we've put in the feeder, a couple of extra balls over the top of it. But yeah, the setup is Two bank sticks, alarm on the, on the, the, the front, uh, and I'm fishing on quite a tight bait runner because with that bolt rig, you you, you don't want to be given much. Uh, you want the fish to hook themselves either against the rod tip uh, or against the, the weight of the feeder. Now we're fishing quite heavy feeders, about 50, 50 grams there, just to help with that bolt effect. If that fish gets hooked, bolts, hooks, and comes towards us, the drag's not going to work. You're not going to hear absolutely anything. You're not going to hear anything at all on the, the alarm. So a bobbin just on front there, so if you do get that drop back you will get a, an indication on that if that fish comes towards you. Uh, bite indication is always, it's always, no matter what type of fishing you do, it's always important to get that bite indication right. And for this style of fishing, this specialist style of fishing, I think that's 
that's the best, that's the best setup. Uh, and it's one that I quite enjoy fishing as well. So for the majority of our tench fishing through this, I probably will use this setup, but yeah, we'll, we'll get the float rods out at some point uh, and might even fish for them on the quiver tip at some point as well. So as Alex has spoke about, I'm pretty much fishing exactly the same way. Same setup, same rigs, maggots, worms, hee haw fish. So we've just checked the weather forecast and where we're at, I don't drive a 4x4. Four four. And if we don't get out of here, there's a chance we could be stuck here. Because that range they come lashing down for a good four hours, I think. So we're going to, I think, we'll make a decision in a minute, but I think we're going to pack all our gear up we're going to head to another water where we can fish comfortably into dark where there's no rain forecast. So I think I've actually just talked myself into doing that. So I think that's what we're going to do. So we'll get all this gear together. It's a bit of a walk back to the car and we'll see you at the next spot. We might be able to pick up some tench and some rind. So venue one for today didn't really produce, well it didn't really produce anything at all. However, I'm still glad we went. It was a new area, it was a new new water, we'd never been there before, never even seen it before. Heard little bits about it, so I'm, I'm still I'm still happy that we went and uh, wrecked it, so to speak. But I just wasn't confident that, but neither of us were confident that a fish, a fish was going to show. And the weather was starting to turn a little bit. So we've come back towards home, slightly. And we've come to another little water that we know. A little secret, a little, little hidden gem. And it does produce tench every now and again. They're not big. They're not big by any stretch of the imagination. But it's been a tough day, so we'll take anything. <laughs> we'll take, uh, die. We'll, we'll, we'll take a, a, a micro tench if it gets us up and running on, on our Tinker Tales campaign. What we can do, however, while the, the tench get their appetite, is to have a little play around with the float rod up a waggler rod because this place is hoaching with rud. Mainly little ones but we've heard a few rumours of two pounders but you just never know. It's a bit bright so we'll just mess around until that sun drops a little bit and then hopefully hopefully pick up a wee tinge or two. What's that when it's at him? Monster. A monster what? A little rud. Now do we know it's a rud? For those that don't know. For a fish this size it's quite hard to tell. But it's the upturned mouth. Kind of protruding, protruding lower jaw. Shows that it's a rud. Also, the dorsal fin. If you draw a line straight through the body. Will sit far more behind the pelvic fins there. There's a roach, the dorsal fin will be much further forward. So 
So we play around with the float rod, it's good fun, reminds me of being a kid. Uh, but then I thought, you know, it's, it's quite bright, so let's, let's try the quiver tip. We put the quiver tip out, just in a cage feeder, a couple of maggots, and I've been hitting fish every cast. <laughs> They've only been wee, uh, until this one, which is slightly better. By no means a monster, but still, lovely little fish. The rud are just absolutely stunning. Lovely golden colour. Bright red fins. They're only wee, but at least it's fish. And they are getting a wee bit bigger, so you never know, that two pounder might just be on the next cast. There's fish moving the reeds over there. Whilst Alex has been over there pulling rud after rud out, I had a wee cap moment feeling great today. But I did persevere with the, the worm, the chopped worm and the feeder. Changed my window feeder that I was using earlier to a cage feeder. And I did put a bait in, a couple of balls in, and I'm literally, I'm not even casting, I'm just dropping down a rod length into them, the margins. Can you hang that word there? It took a while, got a few liners and a pretty decent bite there, so I've refreshed and delivered them up. And the light's fading, so this is, so I've been told, prime time for tench. So, fingers crossed, we can put a tench in the first episode of Tinker Tales. <laughs> I've gone, all out, all, I've gone all out on a tench. I did have another rod set up for maybe a chance of a rod, but after getting the liners and that kind of positive bite, I've brought my other rod closer into the margins. Couple of balls of ground bait in. Alex is still there, well. Playing about with some rod. Aye, fingers crossed. 10 to 8, so we've got about an hour of light left. So fingers crossed. But, I knew it was going to be tough. Early on in the season for the tench. Has been a cold, cold week, that northeasterly wind. Did kind of play havoc with the sea trout fishing. Don't manage a few of them, right enough, but. Don't know that cold. It's affected the tench, but ever hopeful. Well, that's not a tench. That's not what they came for. All day for that wee thing. Blank's off. Well, can't say we didn't give it a right good go. 14 hours later, still tenchless. But that's where it goes, that's fishing. Still early in the year, end of April, plenty time to go and we'll get there, we'll get one eventually. 
It's not all lost cause. I mean, we, we found a, a new water that we'll definitely be going back to because it does look the part and it must hold some lovely fish. And we managed to catch some some miniature rudd. And I got an ice cream memento, <laughs> which is always nice. Hey, uh, what's that? I got an ice cream memento. Yeah, a bunch of pheasant feathers for Gordon, which has kind of made this day bizarrely. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, can't catch them all the time. But we'll hopefully get them next time. And we'll see you then. Carry it. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>